This video is an introduction to the integral branch of calculus with a focus on why it works, its characteristic notation, and its applications to machine learning. In a single phrase, integral calculus is the study of areas under curves. So up until this point in the Machine Learning Foundation series, we've been focused entirely on differential calculus, which allowed us to find the slope at any given point on a curve. So for example, that would allow us to go from distance to speed, distance over time to speed over time by getting that distance over time curve. Integral calculus facilitates the inverse of what differential calculus allowed us to do. So by calculating the area under a curve, like this curve of speed over time, it allows us to figure out how much distance was traveled in total. So differential calculus finds the slope of a curve and allows us to go from say, distance over time to speed over time. And then in that case, we can use integral calculus to go the other way from speed over time to distance. In addition to finding areas, more generally, we can also use integral calculus to find volumes as well as central points. In terms of applications to machine learning, in integral calculus, it is primarily finding the area under the curve that we are focused on. So examples of situations where we want to find the area under the curve in machine learning include to find the area under the curve of this so-called receiver operating characteristic. This is something that we talked about in the preceding video in this Calculus 2 subject. Another example of a situation where we want to find the area under the curve in machine learning is to find the expectation of a random variable in probability theory. So this is widely used in machine learning, including in deep learning models. And we'll talk about that more in the fifth subject, actually the forthcoming subject, the very next one in this Machine Learning Foundation series on probability theory and information theory. So at a high level, how does integral calculus work? Well, much like differential calculus, it has to do with this idea of approaching infinity in some way. So in the case of integral calculus, we use slices that correspond to rectangular area underneath a curve. And as the width of those slices approaches an infinitely small width, that allows us to find the area under the entirety of the curve. So for example, if we have a slice width of this wide, so we have this delta x, this difference on the x-axis, and we use that same delta, that same difference on the x-axis to mark off, in this case, three rectangles under this particular curve, then if we have that rectangle fill to the highest point it can underneath the curve, well, that kind of gives us a reasonable, in this case, not an amazing, but an okay approximation of the area under the curve by adding up these three rectangles. If we have the width of our slices, so if we make delta x half the size, then we can fit in six rectangles underneath our curve. And those rectangles together, when summed up, better approximate the area underneath the curve. So there's less white space in total missing in this situation here relative to this one. So continuing this idea and making our slices narrower and narrower and narrower until they approach a width of zero, and we use dx to indicate a slice width of zero. In this situation, as we approach a width of zero, our rectangles fill the entirety of the space underneath the curve and are a great approximation of the area under the curve. Okay, so we've covered what integral calculus is, how it works, its applications to machine learning. The last thing that I wanna cover in this video is how to annotate integral calculus. So it has its own characteristic notation. So the most kind of trademark part of this notation is this squiggly long S looking thing. 
So this is the integral symbol. And the way that we're using it right here is the indefinite integral symbol. So if you're integrating over a particular range underneath a curve, then you indicate that range at the bottom and top of the integral symbol, and we'll cover that in another video on definite integrals. But for now, we'll just use the indefinite integral symbol. And beyond that, the other key parts of the notation are indicating what function we'd like to integrate. So we specify that first, and then, we indicate what variable we would like to integrate along. So this function here only has a variable x, and so we're going to integrate along that variable x. Note that this dx concept carries over from what we talked about on the preceding slide of dx corresponding to a slice width approaching zero width. Sweet, now that you can appreciate what integral calculus is and how it works, in the next video, we'll detail the integral calculus rules that enable us to integrate equations by hand.